The demo itself will be done by Anna, who's our senior technical consultant, um, and he's got excellent experience within Aruba and uh, deploying the trade off solution. So, Anna, I hand it over to you. Yep. Thank you, Mike. Um, so, this just um, a screenshot from the Canon's website, um, so you can see how complex or uh, complicated it looks uh, when you look at uh, configuring a room. Um, you basically have um, a requirement for a radio server which will authenticate the user onto the network, but it also needs to proxy um, radio requests going out and respond in time um, so that your users can quickly get onto the network. Um, so I just want to, I'm going to switch over to the actual uh, configuration pages in the ClearPass client and show you how easy it is to configure this mess that uh, it appears to be, but it's not. Uh, Okay, so we have logged into our ClearPass appliance, um, and I'm just going to show you how easy it is to configure it well on the ClearPass server. Um, so you have a pre-built set of templates that's available out of the box uh, for a room, and we just need to click start here and select a room. So if I'm saying um, I just want to give it some kind of a name to the service and click next. You define the domains uh, that are related to your institution. So for example, you could be um, uh, our whatever domain name you use for your uh, local authentications. In this case, we'll leave as it is. Um, Click Next. Select your source of authentication for your local users. This could be your Active Directory, um, Novel uh, eDirectory, whatever you use for your backend. Um, then click Next. Uh, select your wireless controllers um, that you would like um, to use the room service against. And next is where we define um, the Janet's um, national proxy radio servers. Um, so this is where we will forward the requests for people who are visiting your institution. And once you've done all the steps, i.e. the five steps that we just completed, we just click update service and that will do all the configuration. And that is all you need to do to configure a room. And uh, following that, um, it will just work as long as you have the wireless controller uh, pointing to the ClearPass server or already is authenticated. Um, so that is how easy it is to configure um, the Adrium services within ClearPass. Now if we look at the troubleshooting side of this, um, I'm just going to quickly uh, show you. Um, we have a tool called Access Tracker built into ClearPass. Having uh, worked with other radio solutions in the past, uh, whether it's free radius or Microsoft MPS. Um, for every single authentication request, you get an awful lot of information, um, which is very difficult to collate. And, um, you know, yeah. Um, so troubleshooting in those scenarios can be pretty daunting uh, for an administrator, uh, unless you are very good with uh, Linux tools uh, and uh, start grabbing for various patterns and stuff. So. Coming back to troubleshooting side uh, on the ClearPass server, it's as easy as um, clicking on a link and searching for stuff. So in this case, I will search my file for myself, um, so we can see. Um, and you can see my authentication attempts. 
And so if I click on that, it immediately gives me um, my device MAC address, what kind of a device I'm trying to authenticate from, um, whether I'm hitting the right authentication sources, etc. Um, if I then click on the input tab, this is where what the user is putting in to the system. So if, for example, um, I put in my username correctly, but my password was wrong, I would get um, uh, an alert tab in here, and you would be able to see why the user has gotten failed authentication. You can also see various authentic uh, authorization attributes for that particular user. So coming back to a point that you might raise during uh, the webinar or the slides um, is that the flexibility within ClearPass to be able to push policies to the actual um, NAS, i.e. the wireless controllers in this situation. So we are seeing this uh, more um, commonly within our, we, we tend to push our customers to reduce the number of SIDs as much as possible. I know a lot of institutions have separate room and staff SIDs, um, which can really be simplified with ClearPass because um, most NAS vendors, um, whether it is Cisco or Aruba, Atropies or uh, Meru or whoever you want uh, you use, support some kind of uh, radius-based uh, policies. And um, within ClearPass, you can configure what the res response or the direction that the controller takes following the authentication. So this way we can uh, automatically use um, Edurome as your single point of authentication. So your staff and students could all be connecting to Edurome and still maintain uh, the separation of access that you would like to have. Um, so as you can see, uh, it immediately uh, shows me uh, my device host name, my um, operating system that I'm using, um, anything else that it profiles uh, about the device. It shows me all the groups that I'm part of in Active Directory. Um, yeah, uh, pulls out all my details. Uh, so anybody who's troubleshooting this, um, it's, it's really easy for them. You can even delegate uh, this portion of the GUI so they don't have access to the entire ClearPass server, but only the access tracker so that you can, they can easily troubleshoot this. So you can end up delegating to your first line or help desk um, so they can look at it. Um, then in the output section is what is sent back to the controller. In this case, we are sending an Aruba user role to the controller because we are using Aruba controller uh, for authenticating uh, this user. Um, so that's how is easy it is um, to troubleshoot things within ClearPath. In this instance, you can see that there's a timeout um, where uh, my authentication has failed because my uh, device either moved away or I didn't finish authentication. Okay. If I click on uh, the alert tab, immediately it says client did not complete the transaction, which means I walked off before the before I could actually connect to the Wi-Fi. Okay, so if somebody is um, complaining uh, from a user's perspective that I couldn't connect, um, and he would like to check uh, at, and go back in time and see what happened, you could easily do that just by typing a partial um, username or the MAC address of the device. If you know any details about the user, you can trace it through ClearPass. Um, this also supports um, historical reporting. So we have something called Insight, which keeps track of all authentication sessions um, and how much data they've been transmitting. We could do all sorts of policies. Um, so you can see there's an accounting tab uh, within here, which shows you um, any active devices that are connected on the network. And uh, if they are connected, then it will show you how much data they've been transmitting. And if you want, you could also enforce um, some bandwidth restrictions. I know typically, at room, you are not supposed to restrict any access. Um, so um, that, that, that's all about visibility and reporting uh, with the clear path. So, yeah. so typically, you you would be able to report on every single activity yeah. on a particular SSI. So, say, example, Edgerome uh, as an SSI, you'd be able to do full reporting yeah. on user activity, authentication, how many people have joined, and what type of devices have joined, yeah. etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we can we have got a full fledged. Um, device profiling, so we can see uh, what kind of devices are coming to our network. If 
if I click at, uh, you can see uh, how many devices are connecting. You can create custom filters um, on a particular day. As you can see, it's not a very busy uh, system, so we um, only see a couple of authentications now and then for our demos. Um, and you can then see how what is the rate of authentication? Are people coming in, going to your network, uh, out of your network? Um, the other aspect of ClearPass is obviously high availability. Um, so this supports uh, full HA. So you can have clustered nodes um, within that. Um, so if I go back to our dashboard, you can see it gives you a clustered status. Um, so you can say you can have more than a one ClearPass server connecting. Uh, in your cluster so that if you want to expand in future uh, in terms of growth, you can easily add more nodes into the cluster. You don't have to configure additional services or anything. It just, you can just keep uh, building this as you go. Um, also, this allows you to provide um, high availability radio services through VRRP or um, layer 3 failover between the nodes and things like that. Um, it also uh, allows you to centrally upgrade all your ClearPass nodes if you need to. Um, so that again, uh, coming and looking at uh, fast radius solutions, whether it's free radius or Microsoft NPS, yeah, upgrading a Windows or uh, Linux box and upgrading various free radius versions within that can be pretty challenging and more than often it breaks things when you upgrade things. So this is um, something which is really useful in terms of ClearPass where you can upgrade uh, solutions without breaking things. And you have obviously got robots and keep your support behind that. Fantastic. Okay. At this point, I would like to hand it back 